I researched master's degrees and I found STS and it sounded like the most interesting thing you could do. It was, it was English, it was promoted as being international, which it, which it really was for my cohort. And um, it was social science, but it, was, it seemed like more than that and which kind of fit perfectly for, for me. And I applied and I got in and uh, it turned out to be probably one of the better decisions that I made in my life. So um, I was really glad that I did it. First of all, I think the international context was, was great in my cohort. Um, getting to know all these people from different um, regions and countries in the world, different continents really. Um, the second thing I think was also studying with people who weren't only social science but who were natural science and engineering and philosophy and communications and whatnot. Interesting thing about SDS is that um, it somehow questions the status quo. So in a sense that we are a very uh, technological, very scientific society, and especially in development cooperation, uh, we always have this perception of um, technological innovation being the way forward. <clears throat> which to some extent I also think, but uh, what STS does is it questions this. It says kind of, okay, stop, let's look what's going on exactly there. What do we really mean when we talk about uh, technology transfer, when we talk about modernization, about these things? Because <clears throat> in usual development discourses, you could say these are very often left unquestioned left un as such, and STS gives me the tools, so to speak, uh, to look at it in depth, to see or understand much better what's going on and how we can adapt the processes to make sure that they really have an impact. I think I stick to it maybe because it was something at the time I perceived as political. Mm. So I had the feeling it's not only just talking about things that maybe no one is interested in, but it's something that matters. I think I had quite soon the feeling that it's something that is more than just doing research on something just because you're interested in, but that there's another side that really does something with the, with the results. So it was a rather political question and I thought that was, I think that was what kept me with STS. Um, it's, what, what, what I liked about it is that, that this is a field that is, um, has not a, a classical uh, disciplinary uh, history with very stable methods, with very stable theories uh, that um, where you very only have to stick with a certain corpus of, of, of theories and methods you have to deal with. But it's very open, it's very interdisciplinary. Uh, looking at back at the history of SDS, people came from, from various fields, also came from the natural sciences, bring along their experience. But what I've really found interesting is that you don't came in with a standard set of theories and uh, methods and then look at things, but look at things and then make up your own methods and theories, develop your own theories, uh, theoretical approaches that fit to the issues and that, that the issues bring up in, 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 in contemporary society. I'm Claudia Schwarz and I work at Open Science, uh, which is a science communication organization here in Vienna. And there I'm, yeah, I'm leading projects on public engagement and um, I'm currently leading two projects. Mm -hmm. One is about personalized medicine mm -hmm. and the other is about uh, animal testing in biomedical research. Mm -hmm. And in both projects I'm trying to 
yeah, generate a public discourse on these mm -hmm. topics. The connection between my work in STS and now is is already it's a seamless um, mm. process in a way to me because I I really felt when I applied for this job that I'm perfectly qualified for it because of my experiences in especially public understanding of science and public engagement with science. It was really interesting experience for me when I started this work at Open Science because there were only natural scientists there and um, I, I felt really exotic and they, they also yeah, made me feel very exotic in a way that they treated me uh, as a kind of um, person with a kind of special knowledge, which, which was very unusual for me because I, I was always amongst other social scientists uh, before. So, um, but I, I find that really um, fruitful, this uh, different uh, disciplinary perspectives coming mm. together. And uh, I feel really appreciated for, for what I bring into this organization and for my, because I know my perspective is unique and they know it. So I, I know always that I can bring this specific uh, flavor to a, a project proposal, for instance. My name is Michael Strassnick. Uh, I work at the Vienna Science and Technology Fund, WWTF, and I'm a program manager there basic work I do is to um, support and to uh, design programs of research funding in various fields that we have. Well, I think what is different coming from an STS background is that you have a deep and basic understanding of how science functions and works. Of course, that's, that's different in, in, in different fields, of course, that it's different in, in different nation states. Uh, in Vienna, it's different than, than for the, in the UK and other stuff. But you get at least um, tools uh, that uh, allow you to quickly get the knowledge of how this system works, which really helps you a great deal in, in, in program management, in, in designing, in doing evaluations and all these other things I have to do in my work. My name is Andreas Schader. I'm working uh, as researcher for an NGO called SARA, Civil Courage and Anti-Racism Work. It's dedicated to support a society without racism. And I'm working in a research project on uh, racial discrimination at the labor market. We did a lot of interviews with job seekers. And within the interviews, uh, the online job platform became uh, prominent topic, how they, um, how they used it and that they used it and that they played an important role for the job search. Mm -hmm. And to address this in full, in full uh, SDS offered for us and for me, I think helpful perspectives and approaches and concepts to really uh, cover this topic. Because it helped us to, in the project to grasp job search then as a complicated social technological uh, activity. And it helped us to uh, address the role of job platforms in a more active manner, especially when addressing the topic of job search as epistemological activity, so that they can gain an, try to gain an overview of uh, the labor market and estimate their, their position on the labor market. Um, job platforms uh, played an important role in this, which we wouldn't have seen or addressed or thought about without the SDS literature. Um, this also led to, to us thinking about what uh, what role blood job platforms may play when it comes to discrimination. If they, maybe the, the, the way they are designed, support or um, even enable discrimination at the labor market, which then led to us analyzing the job platform in a different way, which we haven't done without the input from SDS. <laughs> My 
my name is Alexandra Super, and I'm now an assistant professor at Maastricht University in the Netherlands, where I work in the Science, Technology and Society group. On average, maybe STSers uh, are a little bit more passionate about what they do than maybe it's a function of being a relatively young field that most people make a sort of conscious choice to sort of go into at one point rather than you start at it as an undergraduate and you sort of just kind of mm. do one step after the other that there seems to be a sort of sense of curiosity mm. and passion that is kind of characteristic certainly not just of SDS but that I think that's one of the things that first drew me to SDS and that still seems to to be there there's certainly a certain amount of reflexivity about working in academia mm. as an STS researcher and certainly a kind of openness to other perspectives just because it's not there's no very clear uh, boundaries of okay this is still STS and this is not most people have some kind of second foot somewhere in another field and so there's I think maybe a little bit more openness also towards other approaches to, to kind of more interdisciplinary style of working. My name is Frederick Rolther. I'm a planning officer at GIZ, which is the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, um, a bilateral uh, aid organization or development co cooperation organization of the German government. It's a pretty big organization, 17,000 employees. We're basically the ones implementing the development projects for the German government. And I'm a planning officer at the headquarters. STS, in a way, uh, shaped the, <coughs> the topics that I wanted to work with. First, through my master's study, where I was indeed looking at the technological, technological development of smallholder farmers, and through my PhD, where I was looking at this whole scientific process in working with smallholder farmers which helped me in a way to profile myself towards GIZ, my current company, as someone who looks underneath the hood, you could say, of uh, the solutions, technological solutions that we try to promote. And that's something I believe I was able to sell as such and which made me interesting and I believe uh, still makes me interesting in the company. What STS does is somehow provide me with tools to understand these processes much better to see uh, the underlying changes that are taking place, power relations, like the first question I usually ask when I look at such situations or problems, okay, who controls what, who does what? And uh, STS in a way provides me with the intellectual tools or with the concepts to be able to do that. There's one example which I had this year in March. I was in a project in Kyrgyzstan where we had, uh, or where we are implementing actually on a regional scale in Central Asia, a community-based natural resource management uh, project. So concretely it means you have uh, smallholder farmers who also have uh, walnut forests, or there are walnut forests, and the smallholder farmers with their small fields and their cattle also collect walnuts on a regular basis, but these forests are managed by the government. And the project introduced um, a new way of organizing this management of the forests in which these farmers are much more involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was on a pilot basis and now they wanted to expand it throughout the region. And I was asked somehow to help and uh, conceptualize this upscaling uh, process, like see how can this be done. And there basically this whole STS approach helped me very much because I looked at this community-based natural resource management as a complex network and even the project actually I looked at it as basically a network with different actors including our company trying to achieve specific objectives and came put very simply to the conclusion that we cannot understand this community-based natural resource management as a package but we have to look at the different components and somehow offer these components as a kind of basket that can be applied in different other areas depending on the context of those areas, depending even on the interests of the individual people. My name is Ruth Müller. I am uh, Assistant Professor for Science and Technology Policy at the Munich Center for Technology and Society at the Technical University of Munich. 
I finished the PhD at the department uh, in 2012, and a little bit before that and after that, I started working at a, actually with at another research institution in Vienna that was not part of the university, where I worked in a bit more practical way. I worked with policymakers from Austrian ministries and was actually kind of working to advise them on strategies in the area of international collaboration for science and technology. That was really interesting too, um, because it allowed me to actually see how the ways of thinking I had acquired about during the SDS master and PhD um, would actually work out in interaction with people who do very practical work around science and technology. And that worked out quite well. Um, it was very interesting on the one hand, and I felt that um, after a while of discussing, the policymakers actually could, could connect to these ways, of, or these ways of thinking were valuable to them. What I like about being an academic in SCS is that there is a rather large possibility to connect with all kinds of different disciplines. On the one hand, um, we have the natural sciences and engineering disciplines where um, that we engage with in our work, that we think through. Um, then often our methods draw on various disciplines, to, sociology, anthropology. So you get in touch with different ideas, how to think about research coming from different disciplines, which again allows you to speak to more people than just a bunch of people in your narrow discipline. And then I feel that, so the question, first of all, of course, the question of knowledge, but then also questions of science and technology are um, present in many more studies, in many more disciplines, also in the social sciences and humanities, than one would naturally think. My name is Alina müller strassnik I work at the Agency for Quality Assurance and Accreditation Austria as a project manager, mainly working on audits at public universities and counseling for all institutions in the higher education sector. I think it helps me to see a broader picture, mm -hmm. which I think is very important when you work with uh, universities or, or universities of applied sciences or any institution in the higher education, that you don't see them um, as an island within sort of society, but they, that they are very much intertwined with um, various other actors. Mm -hmm. And I think when I compare or when I see discussions with my colleagues, maybe that sometimes for me, this is just something I would never question that it is important. And I always look at it and then thinking about how does it interact with other systems. Well, actually, it is at the moment quite relevant because we are discussing about what does it mean um, from an institutional view to have a good uh, environment for research. So what does an institution need to enable good research? And I think here my STS background helps me a lot in discussing this with my colleagues. And exactly what I said before, to see sort of the interaction between research and other parts of society and other maybe other aspects universities deal with teaching but also the whole administrative part mm -hmm. and I think in this discussion the the knowledge I have and that I sort of have from my STS background really helped me in thinking about what is important so I think at the, at the moment it really helps me a lot and I even started rereading articles from my studies mm -hmm. because of sort of what is it? How does research work? And where could quality assurance go into it in sort of supporting research? Mm -hmm.